Okay, so thank you for joining me for another video. We're back at it again with another um, geometry video. This is the last geometry video I am making for this evening. Um, this is a video on finding the measure of angles. So multiple different types of problems. I mean, I can't think of all the different problems that somebody may get for needing to find missing parts, missing angle measures, um, solving for X when it comes to angles. There's so many different types of problems you can get. I think this covers a good basis though that kind of leads off of uh, my types of angles video, which I made earlier um, this evening. So we're gonna get right into it. Number one, these are adjacent angles. So being adjacent angles, they have a shared common side. So these are adjacent angles and being adjacent angles, we know we can use, I'm dropping papers. We know we can use the um, angle addition property because this angle plus this angle is going to add to be the whole angle, which is 60 degrees. So we get 20 degrees plus 2x degrees equals 60 degrees. Now for the sake of this problem, I'm gonna get rid of the degree symbols and I'm gonna get rid of the parentheses on this 2x. So we're just gonna get 20 plus 2x equals 60. Now we can go through and solve. We would want to subtract the 20 from both sides. We get 2x equals 40. We can then divide both sides by two. And we get x equals 20. Now that is kind of the first half of the problem. So I would assume that this problem is, what is this missing angle? Now some problems, some teachers may ask you just solve for x, so x equals 20. But I wanna actually know what is the measure of angle, right? What is the measure of angle BXC? And we now know that it is two times 20, which is gonna equal 40 degrees because I can substitute in what X is in for X. So two times 20 is 40. Now, obviously some of you guys might skip this and be like, oh, well, I know that this is 20. I know the whole thing's 60. So what's 60 minus 20? Oh, it's 40. That's a quick way to do it. There's more than one way, but you can set up the equation using the angle addition postulate of the measure of angle AXB plus the measure of angle BXC equals the measure of angle AXC. So that's just using the angle addition postulate is you can create an equation. The angle addition postulate allows you to create an equation. So we're actually gonna do that on number two also. So we have this angle addition postulate of angle QRT, so measure of angle QRT, plus the measure of angle RTS, equals the measure of angle, the whole thing, which would be Q, T, S, right? So we happen to know, we happen to know what this angle is equal to. And we also happen to know what this angle is equal to. But in addition to that, we have this fancy little red square down here. If I shade that in, hopefully everybody knows that that red square, red square means right angle, which equals 90 degrees. So we know everything. We know what we can substitute in. We can substitute in Okay, so QRT is X plus 10. 
drop the plus sign. Plus, okay, measure of angle RTS is 2x plus 20, okay, equals, oh, the whole angle is actually a right angle, so we're gonna get 90 degrees. Now we just go through, let's combine like terms. We get x plus 2x, so 3x. We get 10 plus 20, which is 30. Now we can start canceling things out, minus 30, minus 30. Ah, son of a gun. Um, yep, I did that. We're just gonna scribble that out. Drop three X down here. Three X equals 60, my bad. Um, and then we're gonna divide by three, divide by three. X equals 20. So again, some teachers might be like, okay, that's enough. You can stop there, you're good. I would want to go one step further with this problem and I'd want to solve one or both of these angles. So I would plug in 20. So two times 20 plus 20 equals 60 degrees. And then over here, 20 plus 10 equals 30 degrees. Well, is 30 plus 60 90? Darn straight it is. So 60 plus 30 is 90 degrees. It all worked out, right? 30 plus 60, 90 degrees. I got my right angle. So again, using the angle addition postulate, you can set up little angle plus the other little angle equals the full angle. Go through, you solve for X, you substitute in what you know, solve for X, plug it back in, and then you can solve the angle measure. All right, let's go to another problem. This one is a situation of not a right angle, but of a straight angle of a linear pair. So this is a linear pair. So a linear pair are two adjacent angles. So these angles are adjacent. That's two adjacent angles, they share this side and they are supplementary. Two adjacent angles that are supplementary, so they add to 180 degrees. So I can set this up of this angle plus this angle equals 180. So I can set up 10x minus seven plus three x plus five equals 180 degrees. Because I know that it's a linear pair because this angle plus this angle form a line which is a straight angle and a straight angle is 180 degrees. So little plus little equals 180. Combine like terms, I get 13x. Combine these like terms, um, what is that, negative two? Negative two, so equals 180. Add the two across, add the two across. 13x equals 182. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to divide by 13, divide by 13, and x equals, where is my calculator? Um, 182 divided by 13 is 14. So x equals 14. And then I'd want to plug that back in, right? I'd want to plug it back in. So I would still get 10 times 14 minus seven, which would be 140 minus seven, which would be 133 degrees. So this angle here, this angle from here to here is gonna be 133 degrees and then over here I'd plug in 14 so I get 3 times 14 plus 5 so 3 times 14 28 32 42 42 plus 5 and then I would get 47 so this angle here would be 47 degrees 
And then you can double check, is 47 plus 133, 180? Yes, it is. So it worked out. I did the right math. 133 plus 47 is 180. Perfect. All right. Here's a fun one. No equations, but a little fun. So you should actually be able to find all of these angles. So a quick one is this. Well, that's a linear pair. We just did a linear pair problem. So if I need to find this angle here, what adds to 30 to make 180? 150. So that's 150, right? Now another one is, is this angle is vertical. So these two angles are equal to each other because they're vertical angles. Right, they make a perfect, they make a perfect X with each other, right? There's that opposite rays, there's that opposite rays. They are opposite each other in the form of an X. So they're perfect vertical angles. So that makes this over here also 30 degrees. Okay, so we've done that much stuff. Now what we're gonna have to use is we're gonna have to use, oh, this is a right angle, so I can fill in here. This is 90 degrees, right? Well, if this is 90 degrees and I need to find this little angle, something I need to know is what is that angle? Well, if I look here, if this angle If this angle is 90 degrees and this other angle is a linear pair with this angle, this other side also has to be 90. So this other side right here also has to be 90. So if this whole thing is 90 degrees, what would this little piece here be? If this here is 30, what adds to 30 to make 90? 60 degrees. So that would make this piece 60 degrees, right? So it's using your knowledge of linear pair, vertical angles, right angles um, to solve all the pieces. So, right, we had, oh, this is 30 degrees, so this is 150 because this whole thing's 180. Okay, well, this angle is completely vertical of this other angle, so that's also 30 because the vertical angles are equal. Okay, well, this little red square here means that it's 90 degrees. Okay, if that's 90 degrees, then from here to here, also has to be 90 because they form a linear pair, right? This box and this box form the linear pair. All right, piece by piece by piece. I got one more example. And this one more example is of a, um, just kidding, I was gonna do another one, but I'm tired, I don't wanna be here any longer. So this example is of angle bisectors. So angle, what am I trying to spell? Yeah, talk about being tired. This is of a, let's, let's actually call it a bisected angle, right? And bisected means divided in half. So divided in half. So that's why you see these tick marks here. That means they are congruent, that means they are equal. So unlike using the angle addition postulate where we're gonna do little plus little equals big, what we're actually gonna do is set two halves equal to each other. Because if it's been bisected, we know that the measure of angle BAC equals the measure of angle CAD. C, A, D. We know that 
this angle is equal to that angle because they are both halves. This is 50%, this is 50%. They are equal. So now I just substitute in what I know. I know that for, that this angle here is 4x minus 10. I know that this angle over here is x plus 20. We're gonna go through and solve. I always cancel out any variables on the right side first, so minus x, minus x. That cancels out. I'm gonna get 3x minus 10 equals 20. Then I cancel out the numbers on the left side, so plus 10, plus 10. I get 3x equals 30. Then I divide by three. And I get x equals 10. Again, that might be the end of it. If it says solve for x, I just solve for x. I want to go one step further though, and I'm going to substitute in um, 10. So I know for this one, we're going to get 4 times 10 minus 10 equals 30. And over here, 10 plus 20 equals 30. Oh, sweet. 30, 30. They're both, they should be equal, right? 30 equals 30, perfect. Oh, what do you know? Now I actually know what the entire angle is. Now I know what this whole angle is. The whole angle is 60 degrees. Boom, shakalaka, All right? So, Hopefully, uh, I think this is a pretty decently long video, um, but hopefully me going through these um, examples of how to solve angles based on different linear pairs, vertical angles, bisected angles um, is helpful. So thank you for watching. Give it a thumbs up if it was helpful. Um, that lets me know if these videos are even a good thing for me to be making. All right, so see you next time.